So out here for a third day and it's just, it's kind of funny because it just looks so different now. You know, so much more color out there, a lot more greens in the grass and things just seem much more chromatic and rich in color, which isn't a bad thing, but it's just different. Um, but I feel like, again, I keep saying this, but as long as I can still glimpse that river, that'll kind of lead you out of a, out of the picture, basically. I can, I feel like I pretty much can deal with how much it might change, how much the scene might change over the next probably two weeks. Uh, I noticed there's a bunch of rainy days coming up, so it's a little bit frustrating. It's going to be very different by the time you get out again. Mention my setup really quickly. Um, th this thing really, if you're ever wondering what kind of umbrella to get for landscape painting, this is the one you want, this best umbrella here. And um, because it has those wind bends, you see those there? And so, but even so, if you have like extremely strong wind, I have had this thing pretty much start to blow over. Um, I think on that day I put like a rock, a rock or something on the actual easel. Uh, but yeah, that's, this is the thing to get. Don't try to paint with a normal umbrella. This tiniest wind like we have today, we'll just take it the whole thing right over. So best umbrella, they're quite good. Well, basically, the best umbrella thing that you get here when you order it, it has this uh, apparatus here that attaches, and they make the point that you can tighten these, um, you can tighten these as much as you want, and it really is true. I've tightened them, you know, I've tightened them as tightly as I possibly could, and uh, they definitely don't break or, or anything like that, or strip. Um, so that part is all true, and then so that it goes up to this metal rod and if you just unhook if you just unscrew this one it moves in any direction you want and uh the only thing i did replace is i went to like home depot and got a longer rod as you see there uh, it was very simple to get i don't know if, what this is a quarter inch rod and then i went online separately and bought this like clamp as you see there uh to hook it to the rest of the umbrella so and I, I definitely found I've spent most of this morning like working in this area, which is definitely the area of interest in the picture, uh, down and through there. So the idea with the composition is that you sort of led in through this road to, to this area and then basically led out, led out of the picture you know, as the Lieutenant River appears through the branches, through the leaves, off to the right. So essentially you're led through in that sort of a direction, that you're not really stopped anywhere. But anyway, this area just, it just feels like it needs to be more developed, and that's what I've been doing this morning. And this is a good example, I mean, about uh, so much of with landscape is ultimately it's just like an abstract painting, really, like certain areas like this over here where the the shadows are cast and there's all these little cast shadows and they're sort of a blue gray. And then you have kind of the warm color of the road, even though the, it's gravel, it has kind of some warmth to it. And then like the warmth of the these leaves. And the way these shapes basically all come together is sort of an abstract design. Um, especially through, in through here, it almost reminds me of like ripples in, a wa in the water, basically, that you get. Here it is, uh, getting close to the end of today's session. But uh, definitely looking forward to next session, I feel like I can really Maybe it'll even be close to completion after one more session. The problem, of course, is that it's going to be raining, uh, like this weekend. But, uh, you know, it could be next, it could be like a week from now before you work on it again. Um, but I like, uh, the paint's starting to take on kind of the quality I was hoping for up in here. Um, where it's definitely thicker, but it's like going over dried paint, basically. And I always kind of like it when it gets to that, that stage. 
I guess there's still areas that aren't covered yet uh, just because I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do with the lighting it's changed so much like in here I, I was just deciding to make a decision on that next next time because it's this section in here but it was kind of in shadow when it started so a lot of like planning ahead those, those kind of things one of the great things about uh, painting here at the Florence Griswold Museum is that, you know, the American Impressionists, the old-time art colonists, their paintings are everywhere, and they have an example right here on the visitor's guide of, uh, by Child Hassam, and Hassam's definitely someone I've always been fascinated with, that, that dance of color. He makes it look easy, uh, but this is a good example here on the cover of, um, Basically, he's, just, he's never really describing anything. Only very subtly, you see those branches there, for example. But other than that, you know, there's a good video of him. I might be able to put it up um, from the 1930s. I think it was put together by the Metropolitan Museum of Art of him uh, actually painting. Then you come outside and look around, and it actually does look, actually does look like Hassam's painting. All right, I think pretty much leaving it there for today. And again, I'm really looking forward to next time to finally, you know, filling in all these little gaps. Actually, when you look at Child Hassam's work and you look closely at it, there, there's definitely places where you see the bare canvas. It's kind of funny. Um, and Willard Metcalf too, I noticed I've looked closely and there's, there's the bare canvas. Now the canvas is always toned. Like, I think with Metcalf it's usually like a light gray. And same thing with Hassam, but I feel like Hassam's tones are usually warmer, it seems like, but I don't know. They're just off-white, basically. So back in the studio now, um, and I just wanted to take a moment and talk about a book I've been mentioning, which is Pictorial Composition and the Critical Judgment of Pictures by Henry rankin Poor. It's actually from 1903, but this is a third edition, I think, so it's a number of years later. But um, there's there's so much in here. Um, and the book is is uh, available on archive.org. I mean, you can just you can just read it as a flip book. It's it's a uh, uh, public domain. So I mean, you don't have to look for a copy, you can just read it right online. But um, I tried to just pick a couple of things that have always stuck with me. And the main one right here, uh, right there, in, in, in every composition, the eye should cross the central division at least once. I mean, it's such a, it's such a uh, simple, simple concept, but uh, you know, if, if the viewer looks at your painting and, and doesn't feel compelled to cross the center line at least one time. Yeah, he says at least at least once. So, and he gives examples of, uh, I think he shows a photo in here later of where you don't have to cross. I think he uses that as an example of why you're just compelled to just stay on the left and never have any reason to go to the right. So he's saying that that's a, that would be an example of poor composition. Um, the other uh, chapter here on entrances and exits, and this, uh, so I, I have another painting here that I did a few years ago, but I, it's the first painting I did after reading his book, and I wouldn't have set up the composition this way without reading his book, but I was really thinking about the idea of a road kind of leading you into the picture, and... And as far as exits, I was thinking like back here somewhere would be the exit. Um, so that was this was a composition that was deliberately uh, set up uh, for that reason. This is a good spot actually, not far from from my studio here, and might might be able to revisit that place. Um, anyway, uh, so that's why I was thinking with with this with this composition. You know, you kind of led in, you're crossing the center line. And then I was thinking this is the area of interest, basically. And then you're naturally led out um, visually with the Lieutenant River as it disappears out back that way. 
Um, but his entrances and exits chapter is pretty amazing. If anyone has ever, anyone who's ever read it, you, you can't forget it really because there's just so much in here. Um, let's see. He talks about how the exit should be guarded so that after the visitor has moved about and seen everything, he comes upon it naturally. Earlier in here, he, he talks about it basically being like you're inviting someone into your house and you're kind of showing them around naturally from room to room. And, and then after a while, it's time to leave, basically. So, uh, yeah, and this is another thing. Providing two or more exits is a common error of bad composition. And so, yeah, so if you have two, two ways in which the, the viewer can get out of the picture, it's, it's, not, it's not good, basically. And then, and the only other thing I wanted to quickly mention, it kind of took me by surprise, this, this part. He actually uses Henry Ward Ranger's paintings as examples of bad composition. And I, I was kind of shocked by this. Because they would have both in uh, this book was written in 1903. It was published in 1903. They would have both been in Old Lyme, right there where I was today at Florence Griswold Museum, um, as part part of the art colony together. And they showed in the 1903 exhibit exhibition there in town. And then the interesting thing is Ranger leaves Old Lyme after that, and never comes back. And I always wonder if something went on with here. Um, but here's like, these are, I think, drawings done by Henry Rankin Poor of Ranger's paintings. And he uses them in here. He talks about how the stone wall is the damaging line. Not only does it parallel the bottom line, the bottom line always unfortunate, but it cuts the picture in two from side to side. Um, but basically, he uses Ranger as an example of uh, poor composition. So even though they were painting together. And they're part of the old Lime Art Colony.